Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the Shovel Podcast. I am, I guess I'm the host, Dylan. So you're all very welcome. If you are listening to this, hello. If you are watching this, you can see I have a beer. So cheers. Um, this podcast is loosely focused around the creative world. I'm a designer, a photographer, a video maker, amongst an array of other things. So I wanted to create a space where I could just talk about things that interest me, people that I find interesting, things I've learned, share anecdotes and stories and things like that. Just all loosely based around the creative world. This is in its infant days at the minute, and I'm trying to find my footing with it and work out what I want to do with it and how I want to do it. Let's just be excited that I uploaded another episode. So today I kind of want to talk about gear. I made a purchase today that I wanted to discuss. Maybe to make me feel better that I spent the money I did on it. <laughs> maybe maybe you need some... Um, What's the word? Uh, affirmation. Maybe you need some affirmation and you're looking to buy this. Let, let's get straight into it. I bought myself a new computer. It's a, uh, it's a brand new MacBook. So I shot an unboxing of it. That took all of my enthusiasm to do. Let's roll that little unboxing. So there you go. What do you think of that? That took about 45 minutes to do, which is completely ridiculous. I've also stuck just the unboxing video, I think, by itself on my YouTube channel. If you can't see that, I watched this back and went, that's shit, we're not uploading it. But if you're listening to it, I just cut that whole bit out, you know? So I didn't want to give you elevator music while you were driving about. But in a nutshell, I got the Space Gray MacBook Pro 16 inch. It's the M2 chip, the M2 Pro chip. So, you know, why do I want to talk about it? So in, my, in the previous episode, I talked a little bit about procrastination. And that is a decision I've been procrastinating on for fucking ages and ages. To my left here is an iMac 21.5 inch Intel Mac. Now this is a 2000 and what year are we? 2011, 2000, this is 2011 iMac. So it's 11 years old. Uh, that Mac is older than my child. How is that possible? I have always been an Apple user. I've never owned a PC, a Windows computer or anything ever. And that, be that is because my background is just in Apple computers. My dad's a graphic designer and has been forever. And the man was like before computers. So he was like doing design, making adverts for print magazines and billboards and things like that before you had computers to do it. He did it with actual things, paper, letter set, tracing paper, pens, things like that, right? Repro houses. There was a whole, I sort of understand the theory. I have no idea about the practical side of it, but I remember him getting his first computer and he is so, he was so like OG in that world. He was like one of the first wave of people in South Africa where I grew up to use Acrobat PDFs to send proofs back and forth to people. Before that, they used like FedEx. You know, that's a printer thing, send it overnight courier. <laughs> so someone could annotate it and go, could you just change the kerning on this and then send it back? That's, that's where he came from. So when he got his first computer, it was like, what the fuck was it? It was some old ass Mac. Let me try to work out what it was, right? Apple Mac in Tosh. I remember what it was called, Quadra 900. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I think it was uh, an Apple Macintosh Quadra 900, right? If you watch, you can see that's it on screen if you're looking. 
it was like this old beige power pc kind of thing he's probably going to watch this and go actually it was the 950 or whatever but it was something like that sort of a box i remember getting the thing it was freaking massive and the, mo the monitor was like a big tube monitor with a big background in it and all that sort of stuff um and i remember using that as a kid and he was teaching me things like macromedia freehand and pay adobe page maker um you know I, and I remember all that starting and how that all sort of, how you use that quark, all those early days of that and design stuff. So my early footing was with early Macintosh computers back when they were still called Macintosh. So I've been an Apple fanboy since they were Macintosh. Uh, I've always been in that ecosystem. I've never, I've, I've worked in, in college on PCs and I, and the first professional design job I got in 2007 was I had a, a PC for the first like year and a half was, it's horrible. When you're in the software, there's no real difference, but it's just, I've just always liked the interface for Mac OS from early, early days. Right? I also don't care for Mac or PC, do what, it, do what you like, right? I just like Macintosh computers. Fuck me, that took a long time to get there. So there was that. Then skip forward a bunch of years, then we had a couple at this point. And my mom worked in the Apple store in Cape Town city center. And I was there for the launch of the Apple iMac G3. If you, if you don't remember, it was, Maybe you've seen this, it's like the little blue bubble iMac with a plastic casing on it. You'd get them in a whole array of different colors. They came with this free dinosaur game on them that you could play. And they had a little carry handle at the back that was supposed to make them portable. Fuck, man, they weighed a ton. They were so heavy. And I remember when they came out. It was, they were so friggin' futuristic and cool. And you could see through the plastic and you could see all the internals of the computer. Mental. And it had a little CD-ROM in the front of it. Because it was portable, my dad used to be like, oh, I can bring it home on a weekend. So he used to work in the center, Cape Town City Center, a place called Toolbox Square. And I remember him at night on like a Friday evening. We'd come in to pick him up sometimes. Maybe you'd get the train in and meet him and then we'd come back. So he used to get the computer and he used to wrap it in like a, like wrap it up in like a black bin bag, like a, like a bin liner thing, all right? And then he would carry that <laughs> out of the office, across the square and down the street to the car because he didn't want anyone to see it was a computer. So he had this really cool piece of tech and he's wrapping it in a bin bag so he can take it to his car so, so no one would rob him and steal the computer. And I remember watching him do it and just always laughing. And he, the, the way the handle sat on the back of it, it was like this big piece of plastic. It was, it was crazy because every time you held it, it would creak. So every time you take a step, you hear it's like, and you're like sitting thinking at some at some point, this handle is the only thing I'm holding and the computer is gonna be on the ground. I don't know how it ever held. We still have that iMac, that G3, somewhere in the house. I don't know if it still runs, but I know we still have the thing. So one of these days, I'm gonna have to climb up into his attic and take it out and be disappointed that it probably doesn't work anymore. But I remember that so well. Do you know how long ago that was? That was like 1998. Those Macs were released in 1998, 24 years ago. Wow, that's depressing. Where has the time gone, right? Here we are, 24 years later, still looking young and youthful, I hope. Until I take my hat off, then I look like a fucking Kiwi, as my kids say, little fuzzy head. And I remember that coming out, I remember being at the launch, I remember like the way the colors were spinning around, we were like, holy shit, multicolored computers, this is crazy. That seemed so insane back then. And then that stuff has just like progressed over the years. It's just got more and more ridiculous. Anyway, so what's the point? Why are we talking about this? I don't even know anymore. Ever since then, I've, we've had an array of different Macs. Right? We've had the G4s, the G5, the Power Macs, all that sort of stuff. Then I decided to buy my own computer. When I bought my first computer in 2007, I think, it was an iMac 24. I'll show you it here because it's sitting in the other room. It's a, it was an iMac 24 inch and with the black back on it, it was pretty, really, pretty cool. 2007, I still use that computer now. It's my server computer because it has like a whole whack of ports that like you don't have on all the new computers. So I'm using it there so I can access old drives and stupid shit like that. So a couple of years later, I bought myself a MacBook Pro 13 inch, like the base level entry line thing. I was about 1300 pound and it was cool. It was an amazing computer, a nice big, big thick MacBook, but I lasted, I think it was like 2009 I bought that, something like that and used that for years. Then a few years later, I decided to upgrade the iMac because the other one was getting too slow and it got to that point where it was, it was just lagging and all the software was causing issues with it. So I upgraded to a new iMac and I got myself an iMac 21.5 inch. But now I'm doing the math. I think this is a 2013. So it was a 2013 iMac, right? So now I have two iMacs and a MacBook Pro. It was a really well-used Mac. 
And then I dropped orange juice all over the original MacBook Pro. Like it was in a bottle in my back and it, I don't know, I didn't put the lid on properly and it fell out and leaked all over the thing and destroyed it. And I, I, was, I was gutted. I unscrewed and tried to fix bits of it, but I'd effectively fried the inside of the motherboard and everything. More, and it, it, all, it was fucked and it didn't work anymore. And then I decided I needed something faster again. Because this is the issue. These, these computers, they, as they improve, all the software improves, but everything's improving so freaking fast. And this is the battle that keeps happening. And then you go, right, get this, get that. And I never had enough money to buy the good one. I was always buying the entry level Mac. I guess you could look back at this and say, you know, buy cheap, buy twice. But I wasn't really buying cheap. These are 13, 1400 pound computers. I wasn't, you know, just like doing throwing cash at it. These are expensive computers. I just didn't have the money to buy the maxed out ones. And to be honest, the entry level ones lasted me for ages. Eventually I bought a new MacBook in 2017, the MacBook Pro Touch Bar, 13 inch again. And I went for the entry level because I was like, well, I've got the iMac and I've got the MacBook Pro. I just need the two. I don't really like for what I was doing, I was managing to get away with all of this stuff. That was before I started shooting a lot of video. And now I shoot a lot of video, a lot of 4K, a lot of slow-mo 4K. And let me tell you, that little MacBook that I have has worked its ass off for years. And it's been my main computer. And that is because Apple keep updating their OS, Adobe keep updating their software, Final Cut keeps getting updated. And as all these things update, <laughs> the computer is like, whoa, calm down. Like I've only got some, Jesus. The computer is like, I've only got so much power. Would you all, would you all chill your beans while we, we work this out? You know, you're in this battle and every single time I go to buy a computer, I feel like I'm buying it in a panic. And I'm like, oh, I need to buy it because this one's wrecked. I need to buy it because this one's now outdated. And I'm, I, and I'm always buying it at like the end of a, of a season. So like a computer is released in September and I'm buying mine in like, like nine, 10 months later. And as I buy it, something new comes out. And I'm always, I'm always on the back foot. I feel like I've always been on the back foot of my computers and I've never bought a good one. And it is my job and I need a decent one. But I've always managed to get away with the ones I've got. This iMac was fucked in 2002. 20 beginning of 2020 absolutely fucked borderline useless i was about to just throw it in the fuck in the sea right because i was like this is completely pointless it doesn't work you're switching it on it's taking forever to open like five six minutes just to turn on open photoshop you might as well have just gone on a holiday because it was like didn't know what to be at so i was like right what do I do here? I, I was like, can I, do I go buy a new one? And I was starting to do a thing again where I was looking at like base level IMAX and all that sort of shit. And I thought, oh, fuck, right. Before I do anything, I went onto a website called iFixit. And that brings us on to today's sponsor. I'm only joking, it doesn't really. Um, I bought for 200 quid, I bought a solid state hard drive, like a 500 gig, right? I bought 16 gig of RAM, the crucial RAM. And I bought all the tools to take the glass off the iMac and replace it all myself. And I shot an entire video with four camera angles of how to do it. And it took me all fucking day. And it worked. It worked a treat. If I'd taken that to Apple, they were gonna charge me like 900 quid to replace it all. But for 200 pound and a day of my time, I managed to fix it. Now, admittedly, I cracked the screen right in the corner, uh, just a bit like a little, a little half moon shape, just cracked it. But I managed to fix it. And since early 2020, that iMac has been running like a dream, so fast, solid state hard drive, replacing the old spinning disc, that was the big thing that fixed it, it was amazing. And I was like, well, there you go, fucking 200 quid well spent, didn't have to go and bodge out front. <laughs> so then I had another thing to get me by. Meanwhile, the MacBook Pro, the touch bar, if you've used the touch bar ones, are absolute shit. The touch bar is a piece of crap. I had problems with the keyboard continually. Then my screen started to flicker and it all happened like a month after that two year consumer warranty. You know, Apple give you a warranty and then there's this like consumer rights warranty thing. And I tried to challenge it and they were like, nah, you're basically, you fucked it, son. So I wrecked it. So that MacBook has been plugged into a monitor and I've been using it as a, I can use it as a MacBook for about 20 minutes until it gets too hot and then the, the, um, the flat display cable that goes in the back, I don't know, it's crimped or something, and then the whole screen flickers and goes oily, and then it's as good as nothing. So again, here we are, sitting in this position, and I've been sitting there for ages going, I need a better new computer. And then I got stuck in 
analysis paralysis. So for about eight months, I've been talking about what computer I want. Do I want to get a Mac mini? Do I want to get uh, an iMac? Do I want to get a MacBook? If I get a MacBook, which size should it be? And then I was sort of going, nah, I don't know. Do I just get the entry-level MacBook iMac again? Because they're pretty good. Now nah, I need something to move around. And I'll just get an entry-level. And this was going on for ages. And then Apple released that Apple Studio. And I was like, holy shit. And I looked at the price. And I was like, that's crazy. That's where I want to go. That's where I'd like to get to, the Apple Studio. But I don't really, the studio that I'm in right now, the physical studio that I work out of, is you know is near my house, but I do so much work out of my house anyway, like just working from the home office. So I come in here for when I'm shooting stuff for products and clients and stuff, or if I'm working on bigger projects with people, then I use this. This is where I shoot all these vlog, these podcasts and bits and pieces like that. So I don't really want to leave a Mac Studio in here all the time. I it feels like a waste. So the goal is eventually to have a a, a new home studio, like build one. And then at that point, <laughs> just you know, just something else to procrastinate on, really. Uh, then I'll get a Mac Studio. For now, I needed something powerful that I could move around. So I was like, well, I'll just get a MacBook. I'll get a new MacBook, and I'll run a monitor at home. I'll run a monitor here, and I can just move the MacBook between the two. It's fast. It can travel. It also means I can take it in the van with me because sometimes especially in summer, I like to drive to the coast and work remotely where I can also take my surfboard and I can do a bit of working, do a bit of surfing, do a bit of working, do a bit of surfing and chill out, right? That is one of the perks for working for yourself is you have that freedom. It also means I can use it on shoots. It also means I can take it when I travel because I do a bit of traveling with my work. So I was like, eventually got to the point where I was like, MacBook Pro, we've got it. I'm happy with the decision. Then I was like, oh, what size should I get? And then that cycle started. And I was like, and then I, every single time I've bought a Mac, what has happened is I've gone, I'll buy the entry level. And then I go, nah, that's not enough hard drive space. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just, I'll go up one thing in hard drive space. For, and then it's like, oh, that adds 200 quid. And you go, well, if I've added 200 quid for the thing, I might as well just add another 200 quid and up the RAM. And you're like, well, if I'm up the RAM, I might as well just up the processor. And you're like, well, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just buy the model up. And then you're like, right. And then you're like, that's only a, 130 pound more than specking out the other one. But if I'm there, I'm still gonna need a bigger hard drive. I might as well, if I'm gonna spend the money on a bigger computer, I might as well give it a longer life by buying a bigger hard And then that fucking continues until, honest to God, maybe you're like this, or maybe it's just me, or maybe it's Maybelline, who knows? But that cycle just keeps going <laughs> until what you end up with is nothing because you get to the point where you've tired yourself out from thinking and you just give up and you just carry on working. And I found myself editing on this other MacBook Pro that's just slowing down more and more and more. I can put up with it to a point until recently when Adobe updated Lightroom and Photoshop and a bunch of stuff wouldn't work. So I was like, fuck, I have to update them. So then it was like, oh, you can't update them because it's not compatible with this version of Mac OS. I'm like, for fuck's sake. Update the Mac OS. I just update the latest Mac OS, Ventura. So I update the Mac OS. Great, it's cool. It's the first time I've gone into that new OS suite. Brilliant. Now the computer's like, oh, fucking hell, dude. I am not built for this. This is a little bit too much. Now it's struggling just to run Lightroom. Just Lightroom on its, by itself. And I'm like moving through images and there is nothing that infuriates me more than being held back by gear. Whether it's a camera or a microphone or a fucking battery especially not a computer. I work so fast, like crazy fast. There's things in Photoshop that Adobe have changed that drive me friggin' mad. Like if you're familiar with Photoshop and you use this, whenever you're saving stuff, you basically can hit command save or export and then you can just start typing. Before it's even popped the dialog box up, you can start typing, just hit enter. And then by the time the dialog box pops up, it backtracks itself and types the word and hits save. I did that for fucking like a decade until they decided that's no longer something you can do. So now I'm like at export save, start typing. I'll type and then, I'll, and then I won't look up. I'll just hear this noise and it goes like this. Dung. And you're like, Dung. and then you look at the dialogue box and it's just sitting there and the little cursor is blinking because it's going, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm yourself. Now we're ready. Go on, type, type your little name you want into your file. And you're like, you fucker, dot JPEG. Safe. I work at such a fast pace and always have. I'm always, I always feel like I'm a step ahead and I've always felt like my computer's holding me back. Um, so anyway, after a lot of back and forth, I decided I'd buy this MacBook Pro. 
And I was like, right. So then I was like, M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max. Oh, fuck, do I get the studio M1? And this, all this bullshit started again. And eventually I was at the point where I was happy that I wanted to buy the MacBook Pro. And I was like, I'm going to get the 16 inch because I want the bigger screen so that when I am working away from the screens, I can fucking have a decent screen to work from. Luckily for me, procrastination paid off on the one time ever. I sat there and I was like, right, okay. And then I made my decision. I was like, I'm going to go for the middle of the road, <laughs> the middle-ish Mac. I don't want the entry level. I do not have the money to spend maxing out an M1 Max chip thing. It's just, it, it's getting ridiculous money when you get up to that. So I was like, I'll get the one. I need a terabyte of space. I can deal with the 16 gig RAM because it's on the new Mac silicone. And I can, I need the, the space on it. I need the terabyte space. So I was like, fuck it, this is what I'm going to do, right? So then I was like, I'm going to buy that. And then I just held off for a few weeks. I was like, oh, I'll do it after Christmas. I'll do it in January. And then January came up. Oh, I'll just, I'll just pay off a few of these things first. And I'll do that. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And then out of nowhere, Apple launched the M2 chip. And I was like, you see, this is the sort of fucking stuff that annoys me. If I bought that goddamn M1 Mac in December, only to be told a month later, ah, uh, this is actually a better one, I'd be like, what the fuck, Apple? Like, give people a chance because you don't make it easy for us to upgrade these things after purchase. So chill the fuck out with releasing new ones or allow us to change stuff. We can't all afford to buy a brand new computer every year. But then you get stuck into that... Um, renting the computer thing because i did look at that that when you finance it not finance it when you like lease it off apple and you get a new one at the end of the year kind of like if you're buying a car and higher purchase that sort of thing that's great if you're the sort of person that looks after stuff i use my things quite aggressively because i don't like to pander to my gear computers or cameras if you if you if you've met me and you've seen my cameras you'll understand what i mean I haven't, they're, they're tools to use to make stuff. I am blown away by the people you see on, especially on Instagram Reels, people doing like desk tours or gear stuff, right? But not just like unboxing. I mean like, I don't know, they walk into their studio and they sit down, they open up their desk and they sit down and they take their phone out of the park and they take, or like people flip their camera around. They do anybody handling their gear in these videos. Gear they use all the time. And their gear is immaculate. Like, I mean immaculate. Not a mark on anything, not a scuff, not a fingerprint. And I'm like, how the fuck do you keep your gear in such good condition if you use it? Like you're either cleaning it every five seconds, you've got it in a fucking Pelly case all the time, or you don't ever leave your studio and all you do is shoot gear stuff in your studio and you don't really actually use it for anything in particular. That can be the only, because I use mine day in and day out for client shoots, in the rain, in sandstorms. That's actually true. I've done that in the desert. In wind, at the sea, hanging out of cars. I fucking drop stuff. I'm packing shit while I'm running. It, it, I'm in steamy breweries. And then I'm in, oh, it's ridiculous. But my gear is always wrecked. And it's not because I don't give a shit about it. It's just because I use it to make things. And I would rather put the gear at risk to get a cool shot or to do something interesting or to get a shot that maybe if you're being too precious about it, you'll miss all those sorts of things. So all my stuff ends up wrecked. So I just can't see how I'd bring the MacBook, the computer back in at the end of the year and give it to them and them not go, uh, that's completely fucked, sir. What did you do to it? Kick it through a river? And I would go, yes, actually, by accident, it fell in a river. Can I get my new one? And then I'd end up have to fork out some ridiculous bloody settlement fee so I was just like, this is the same reason I don't hire purchase a car. You know, I'm like, I'd, I'd rather buy it and then I don't have to worry about it. I can just do what I need to do with it and use it the way I want to do it. Anyway, so then I decided, screw it, you know what? I'm just going to buy it because I need a new computer. I'm losing the will to live with my current one. They just fucking do it, son. It's a business purchase. Why are you procrastinating on it? So today I was like this, onto the Apple store and I'll buy that purchase. I threw in an AirTag as well because I keep losing my wallet. And then it was like, do you want to deliver that on Monday? Hell no. I'll come to the shop right now and collect it. So I did. And there it is. The Mac, new MacBook Pro 16 inch. I'll tell you what. Quick review on it so far. Just the physical review. Packed beautifully. Little to no plastic in the packaging. Really, really simple. Kind of boring actually. 
It was done very quickly. Thing weighs a ton. It's really heavy in comparison to any of the other MacBooks. It's pretty thick in a nice way. I like it the way it's all squared off in here. That's just a bit of paper in the screen there, by the way. So the spec breakdown is 16 inch um, space gray MacBook Pro M2 Pro chip. It's got 16 gig of RAM. It's got the silicone processor. Me, 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 me. Terabyte of space, fast as fuck. Little engraving in the side there says MacBook. We've got MagSafe back, which is great, and it works so well. <laughs> you stick that MagSafe in. Oh, listen, just listen to that. You ready? And then it takes a good pull to get it out. Um, you got MagSafe on one side, you've got two USB-C, you've got a nice headphone jack, thanks for keeping that. And then you've got a USB-C on the other side, but you've also got HDMI 5.1. So that means you can run like some ridiculous 8K monitor. And you have an SD card, SD card slot. And then you have to use a dongle then for your, for your SD card, which is great. Terabyte of space means I can work on stuff as I go. So I am stoked. And I guess the reason I'm sharing this is these things go in cycles, right? There's always gonna be a new piece of gear coming out, whether it's a camera or a lens or a computer. I think you should be buying the gear that you need to do the work that you have to do, but you do not need to keep upgrading your gear every fucking year, especially as like a computer. Unless, of course, you're minted and you're absolutely rolling in cash, then do what the hell you like. So look, maybe you're sitting there like me and you're just a procrastinator and you can't make up your mind, right? You eventually have to bite the bullet. If you need something, to make your stuff, to do your job, you have to buy it in, at some point. If you keep holding off, it'll just keep updating stuff and then you'll end up never getting the thing that you need. And the amount of time that I have wasted dicking around, looking at this sort of shit and asking questions, reading stuff back and forth. I mean, there's a point you need to educate yourself, you need to learn this stuff, but there's a point where you just need to bite the bullet and buy the fucking thing that you need to do the, do the goddamn job. But you don't need to buy the best one. You do not need to buy something every year. You do not have to keep up with what everybody else has. It's very difficult at the moment because you are continually showing the stuff online. Every time you open up an app or a fucking website or something, someone is sitting there telling you that they've got a new piece of gear, like this very video that you're watching. There's a lot of people online who review gear and talk about gear and push gear, right? And that's what they do. That's what they're there to do. Effectively an extended part of the marketing and sales team for brands. That's what influencer marketing is all about. But it is, you have to keep a level head when you see this, because I go on to all my social medias and websites and shit, all I see is just everybody with new stuff. And I'm sitting there with a 2016 MacBook Pro where the fans are going and then I'm looking online and I'm seeing people with immaculate desk setups and they're like, oh, I just got these 47 monitors and this new MacBook and it's, I got a mahogany stand for it. My mouse is made out of fucking graphite and, and the lampshade above me is a fucking Aperture 300D and it's floating on this fucking ridiculous arm. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but don't get sucked into all that. It's great watching that stuff and there's a lot of people doing amazing stuff talking about all the gear, you know, all the time. And they're doing all the research, reading all the manuals and going through all that. Because some people are like, I am so shit at that. So what I like to do is watch a bunch of those videos, get a nice rounded off bit of education about all the different sides of it and try to make what I feel is an educated decision in buying some gear. So there you go. New MacBook Pro, should be a flying machine. Probably will be outdated in about a year. Thanks so much for listening to this. If you listened the whole way through it, God help you. You mustn't have had anything better to do. If you watch this, thanks so much for, for listening to it. Maybe... Maybe it was helpful. Sometimes I forget what I've said. Like, but yeah, I'm still trying to find my way with this podcast. It's just, if I overthink what I'm trying to do here, I'll, I'll not put, it'll be like the MacBook story again. I'll not put the episodes out because I'll be stuck in analysis paralysis about what we're making. This has been another episode of the, the Shove It podcast. Yeah, if you have any thoughts or comments or anything about this, drop them into the comment section below if you're on YouTube or DM me on Instagram or something like that. But look, thanks so much. Go live your lives and I'll catch you in the uh, next episode. <laughs> yeah, you better. Fuck, sometimes I feel like, you know, there's time, there are times where I legitimately feel like I've got caught up in my own hype there. I just, I get on a roll and I'm like, let's fucking get this done, son. You know, and then I'm like, did that even record? Of course it did. <laughs>